Folks, getting giant calves is arguably the most important thing in life, and we're gonna show you how in an industrial park? Yep, that's what things have come to nowadays. Let's figure out how not to screw up our calf training. Remember the target of training calves is the gastrocnemius muscle and the soleus muscle that's deep to it. We can do both with standing dumbbell calf raises. Let's get to it. Full range of motion. Not doing it is a huge, unbelievably common problem in calf training. The thing is your calves respond super well to a ton of actual movement. The problem is you won't be nearly as strong as you think you are when you try it. However, you are here to grow your calves in size, not get the world's strongest partial calf dumbbell raise, which is a stupid title to have anyway. So when you do your calf raises, make sure that you go all the way down until you are physically incapable of descending. You can arguably sit there for half a second to make sure you've hit it and apply a deep stretch and then come all the way up to the peak contraction where you are up on the balls of your feet. That is how you know also for a split second at the top that you've done a good rep. Every single rep should thus take like a little while because it takes a little while to make sure you've hit bottom and you've hit top. And failure occurs when you cannot hit your peak contraction anymore, not when you just decided, okay, now I'm barely moving. Next mistake is not controlling the eccentric phase. The eccentric phase, the lowering, the descent, is super important to growth and especially seems so for the calves if you've ever had any experience in training them. It's also super easy to slack off, just start counting reps, doing a ton of weight, and not taking your time. You don't have to do five seconds on the way down, but you have to strictly control on the way down. And the best way I have found to make sure that that happens, go slow and also give it a half second or a second at the very bottom to get that deep stretch and then come back up. That really tends to prevent rushing a lot of the time. Next common mistake in the dumbbell calf raise is to bend your knees when you're coming up. It's a little easier because you can do more weight but it may actually take some tension off of the calves themselves and specifically off the gastrocnemius, which you really want to be training a lot when you're doing this exercise. That's the diamond pop part of your calf. So make sure you keep your legs straight. Don't be tempted to do a little jump at the end, bending your knees. Yes, that counts as an extra rep, but it doesn't give you as much growth potential as keeping it strict and potentially taking failure earlier. Next mistake is the pursuit of an excessively extreme strictness. Some folks think the calf raise should be done off your very tippy toes off of the actual uh, stairs and think that when you come up at the top of a calf raise, you should again come up on your very tippy toes. It turns out that a lot of that may be limited by your foot strength. And a lot of times when you're just on your tippy toes, your central nervous system won't even drive that hard through your calves because it doesn't think you're stable. So it ends up costing you calf activation, even though mechanically, from a technical perspective, it loads the calves the most, hypothetically, if you could turn them on. Instead of trying to go for the tippy toes idea, both have your calves only, or your feet rather, only halfway off. Make sure the balls of your feet are solidly on the actual step, and then the rest of your foot is off. That's totally fine. Anything more is too much extra credit in a bad way. And when you come up, just make sure to come up on the balls of your feet and you don't have to come up on your toes. All right, next mistake is to come unprepared for the actual gripping component. Grip, what the hell, you have trouble holding a dumbbell? Not that grip, the grip of your feet. So first of all, try to wear the best grippiest shoes when you train your calves. You'll notice I'm not wearing my famous Crocs because Crocs are a stupid shoe to lift in if you actually have to grip your feet to the ground, right? So I use a pretty decent shoe here, just a regular shoe, has a nice grippy surface, and on most surfaces, it has a good bite, and it allows me not to slip around too much. If you do find yourself slipping, it's okay. What you can do is readjust every couple of reps, but that really does get annoying, and it's something you'd rather not do. Here's the thing. If you find that your shoes aren't working super well, you can even try just your socks. Sometimes that works better. Sometimes just your bare feet if your gym or whatever will allow you to do that, sometimes bare feet really are the best, okay? And if you have a choice of surface, find the surface or rather the step 
that's good. Some steps are really laminated, some steps are really carpeted, and sometimes they're too slick and it doesn't allow you to actually have a ton of stability. Other steps are better. Find the surface and the shoe or the whatever you wear on your feet, including nothing, that gives you as much grip as possible. What about foot placement, toe angle, and so on and so forth? The thing is, there's no correct answer here. Two sort of correct answers. One, whatever you feel best in your calves, it isn't bothering your ankles. And two, it's okay to use multiple arrangements of feet and toe angles in order to just have some variation. So use whatever you want, give it some thought of using one style for a month, another style for another month. And if you have a position that you're trying to work on that just absolutely doesn't feel great in your ankles, it doesn't feel great for your calves, you don't have to do it. Next mistake is messing up the holding the weight part. I know it seems super simple. Folks still ask this question, so I'll just answer it. If you have a dumbbell, which arm do you hold it in? Well, you switch arms back and forth. That gives a really a lot of balance. If you feel like one side holding the dumbbell trains one of the calves better, it just happens to be your smaller calf, just do most of them like that. What we don't want you to do in any way you put weight on your body, whether it's a backpack or dumbbell is totally fine. What we don't want you to do is not hold on to something. Stability is critical for getting as much force output and stimulation and thus growth out of your calves. Super, super critical. So what you absolutely don't want to do is do like a free form gymnastic style calf raise where you don't hold on to anything. People try to do barbell calf raises, not in a Smith machine, but a regular bar, and they'll step on some kind of plate and try to do calf races like that with nothing stabilizing them. They are missing out a huge, huge, huge amount. So grab something nice and sturdy that doesn't move like a stair railing and get to work. And every now and again, you can switch the dumbbell side to side. The last mistake in my experience is going too heavy on calf raises. Sets of five to 10 are fine for a lot of other exercises. I tend to notice that especially on calf raises on the stairs, there's not enough stability. The reps are very difficult to pull off with good technique and the mind muscle connection gets replaced with just trying to lift the weight. It becomes really difficult to control the eccentric to get a peak contraction and actually make progress. It seems to be much better for most people to do stair calf raises in the 10 to 20 rep range, but really in the 20 to 30 rep range on a first set is where a lot of the magic with calves happens. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's gonna burn. Yes, it's gonna hurt, but it's also gonna grow your calves a lot. That doesn't mean that you never train in the other rep ranges you can, probably not with this exercise. If you're gonna do heavier calves, you probably don't wanna hold a 90 pound dumbbell in your hand. You might use a calf machine or calves on the leg press or some other kind of way that is more stable, that can let you load more weight to do lower repetitions. So sets of 20 to 30, a lot of metabolite stuff. And here's the deal. A lot of times your calves clear lactate and really don't have any other systemic limiting factors they clear lactate really fast. So what you can do is take five to 10 seconds of rest between every set and you burn your calves out no problem, stimulating massive gains. You don't have to rest two to three minutes between calf raises. It can be something that now not only you get done quick, but getting it done quick may actually help with a hypertrophy process. Also, if you can get through calves in two minutes, you might be able to be more inclined to train calves four times a week like you probably should be. And then you actually get big calves because let's be honest, calves are pretty boring to train. A lot of people skip out because who wants to slap eight plates on a calf machine, do a partial range of motion, feel like crap, have to rest for two minutes and look at the clock and nothing's happening. Get them done quick, get them done right. And you're going to have bigger calves for sure. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to answer some questions in the comments, that's great. If you want us to cover other techniques, let us know. See you next time.